friends, I am Mr. Sandeep here and in manufacturing technology, in the foundry technology, we have been going through a casting process. So in the foundry technology, our purpose is to make product or component after cooling and solidification, right? So in casting or in foundry technology, we have discussed various processes or say concept of casting process, right? So in today's session, we are going to discuss on some special casting processes. So let us start our discussion on various casting processes, right? So let's start with the special casting processes. So here I mentioned the list of various casting processes that we are going to discuss in this session, right? So in casting process, our purpose is to cool and solidify a metal, right? So after cooling and solidification, our final product will be ready, right? So here I mentioned the centrifugal casting, slurs casting, continuous casting, squeeze casting, pressure casting and die casting, right? So let us start our discussion on special casting processes. So first process here I mentioned is centrifugal casting. So in the centrifugal casting, there are three subcategories that is semi-centrifugal, true centrifugal and centrifuge casting, right? And in the die casting, there will be two part, hot chamber die casting, cold chamber die casting. So let us start our discussion on these processes, right? So in the centrifugal casting, as per the name here, centrifugal force concept is used. It means what do we mean by centrifugal force? With help of continuous revolution, our metal or any product will be forced in outward direction. So this force is known as centrifugal force. So this force or say this concept of centrifugal force will be used in this casting, right? So how can we make a product or which products can be made with help of this casting? So here I mentioned the pipe. It means pipes or say hollow products can be easily made with help of centrifugal concept, right? So let us start our discussion in true centrifugal casting. So as per the name here, centrifugal concept is used and this process can be used in horizontal as well as vertical orientation, right? So how can we use this true centrifugal casting process? So here I mentioned the view for true centrifugal casting process. So here with help of rotation, our metal will be forced in outward direction and with help of cooling and solidification, we can make our final product, right? So this is the concept for true centrifugal casting, right? So here with help of rotation, our liquid or molten metal will be forced in outward direction, right? And we can make our final product, right? After that, here I mentioned the semi-centrifugal. So what happens in semi-centrifugal? Here, our part can be made with solid geometry. It means in true centrifugal, what happens? In the true centrifugal, our final product will be a hollow type. But here, in semi-centrifugal, we can make a part that is in solid, right? It means we can make a solid part. So with help of rotation, we can distribute our metal in each and every corner, right? So that our final product will be having a perfect geometry, right? So this process is known as a semi-centrifugal because here the product will not be a hollow shape, right? That's why it is known as a semi-centrifugal, but the concept remains same, that is of centrifugal. Right? What happens in centrifuge casting? So here in centrifuge casting, our product required will be collected at some distance from the center line. It means here our desired product will be at some distance from the center line. So after trimming off, we can cut our final product that is made at some distance from the center line. That's why this process is known as a centrifuge casting. Right? So here concept use is of centrifugal only but this way we can classify centrifugal casting in three subcategories right after that let's have a look on slurs casting 
So here slurs casting is very important process and in the slurs casting what happens? So here I mentioned the view or steps for the slurs casting. So in the slurs casting, first of all, we have to take a liquid or molten metal in some vessel. So after some time, what we can do is we can revert the metal and or say we can revert the vessel and flow our liquid metal that is collected at the center and after partial cooling and solidification, our final product will be ready in hollow geometry. Right. So once again I repeat, first of all we have to take a molten metal in some vessel. So after some time we can revert our metal or say rotate our vessel by 180 degree. So what happens? The liquid metal that will be at the center or say middle part will not be started solidification and we can remove the liquid metal at some middle part so that our final product will be ready which will be having a hollow part, right? It means cooling and solidification will be started at the outer boundary only because the mold ball will be a cool or say lower in temperature. That's why solidification will be started at the outer geometry or boundary, right? So by taking out the liquid that is collected at the middle part, we can make a hollow product with help of slurs casting, right? After that, here I mentioned the continuous casting process. So as per the name here, in the continuous casting, what happens? We can make our product in continuous way. So in general casting process, what happens? First of all, we pour our liquid metal and after some time our final product will be ready. But here, as per the name, in the continuous casting, what happens? Our product can be made, will be in continuous flow. It means at some place we flow or say we pour our liquid metal and after continuous pouring we can have a final product at another end after cooling and solidification. So this process is very useful in steel industries, right? So here I mentioned the view for the continuous casting or say how can we execute the continuous casting. So here as per our discussion at one end we pour our liquid metal, right? So this liquid metal will be traveled in the downward direction and in the lower mold or in the lower part cooling mechanism is provided or say cooling water circulation is provided continuously. So after continuous cooling our steel lump or say our steel billet can be taken out at the other end after continuous cooling and solidification in the lower part, right? So this process is known as a continuous casting process and this process is very useful in steel industries, right? After that, here I mentioned the die casting concept. So as per the name here, what happens in die casting? So generally die casting is available in two types. That is hot chamber die casting and cold chamber die casting, right? So let's start our discussion on hot chamber die casting. So what happens in hot chamber die casting? So as per the name here in the hot chamber die casting, our metal will be melted within our machine, right? Or say within our setup, right? That's why it is known as a hot chamber die casting, right? So let's have a look on the view of the hot chamber die casting, right? So here in our machine, we can put our raw material or some metal so after melting here, our metal will be melted within the machine or within the body. So after that, with help of some plunger, we can take our liquid metal in some cavity or say between the dyes and after cooling and solidification, our final product will be ready, right? So this is how hot chamber dye casting will be bought, right? So here I mentioned in this view our plunger, our plunger or our ram will be traveled in downward direction so that our hot liquid metal will be forced in some dye or say in some cavity and after cooling and solidification our final product will be ready, right? So here I mentioned after cooling and solidification we can remove 
a die or so we can move our movable die and we can take out our final product right so here i mentioned the product to you that can be made with help of hot chamber die casting right so with the similar concept here i mentioned the cold chamber die casting so what happens in cold chamber die casting so as per our discussion in the hot chamber die casting our metal will be melted within the machine right but in the cold chamber die casting what happens in the cold chamber we take a liquid molten metal that can be converted into liquid state by some outside source or same external furnace and this molten metal can be poured in the machine and this molten metal can be forced in the die or cavity right so this process is known as a cold chamber die casting because here melting arrangement will not be given in the machine right already we take a molten metal and pour in the machine and with help of some plunger or ramp we can force this hot or say molten metal in some die or in some cavity and after cooling and solidification our final product will be ready right so here i mentioned the die as well as the plunger mechanism and after cooling and solidification we can move our die and we can take out our product after that here i mentioned the low pressure die casting or say low pressure casting so as per the name here pressure difference will be used so in this concept pressure difference is very important it means by taking a lower pressure or say vacuum pressure and difference between vacuum and atmospheric pressure we can force our liquid metal in some die or cavity and after cooling and solidification our final product will be ready right so as per the name low pressure casting here pressure difference can be used it means by creating a vacuum we can flow our liquid metal in the higher pressure region and after cooling and solidification final product will be ready so here i mentioned in this image our die will be at upper part right so our liquid metal will be forced in upper part because of pressure difference only and we can make any component with help of this pressure difference concept right so here after that i mentioned the squeeze casting so what happens in squeeze casting so as per the name here squeezing force is used right it means here first of all we have to pour our liquid metal in some vessel and after that we take a downward plunger or say our plunger plunger will be moved in downward direction and due to this downward movement what happens our liquid metal will be filled in between two areas it means here our cavity will be having a larger diameter and our plunger will be having a smaller diameter so between this diameter space our liquid matter will be filled right so this process is known as a squeeze casting because we squeeze our metal in between the space available between plunger and our large diameter cavity right so this process can be used for making a hollow part right that's why this process is known as a squeeze casting process right so here our liquid metal will be filled in between a smaller diameter and larger diameter right so this process can be used for making a hollow part right so this is all about various special casting processes thank you all of you